Okay, so I just wanted to go over uh, a few really easy ways to make your text pop if you're doing thumbnails for YouTube or things like that, or just any sort of text. Um, I don't really know how to do calligraphy, so I just use, obviously, the text tool. Uh, we'll start out with um, one of my favorite fonts. It's called uh, Kanist. And um, if you want to find fonts, just go to defont.com. They have tons of fonts here, and uh, it's very useful. So that's usually where I get all my fonts from. So, obviously, the text tool, uh, you just go to the wrench, and you go to add text, and the text pops up. You can actually resize and make it smaller, and it won't lose quality. The only time it'll lose quality is if you rasterize. Once it's rasterized, then it becomes an image. So then, it, then if, you, if you keep scaling it, it will lose quality. And we'll just change the color of it. So you just tap it, tap the color, and we'll go with a nice, a nice kind of bluish color for now. Okay, so the first thing that I normally do is I'll duplicate it, and I'm going to hide the top layer. So only the, uh, the second layer that we just duplicated is open. And I'm going to go to Hue Saturation. I'll go to Layer. And I'm just going to darken it. Not all the way to black, but pretty dark. And this is going to give us our drop shadow. So I, un I unhide the top one, um, but I stay on the darker layer. So I'm just going to tap the selection tool, and then I'm just going to oops, slowly tap here, just so it brings it out from underneath the light layer. So then you kind of have a drop shadow. Uh, there's, uh, there's obviously a lot you can do with that. You can use the selection tool. You can move it out more if you want. You can change the opacity to kind of make it a softer uh, shadow. Uh, I don't usually use it that far. I just put it out a little bit. And then what I like to do is I like to stay on that colored layer. And then I go to the magic wand, Gaussian Burr, Blur, Layer, Gaussian Burr, Bill Burr's brother or something like that. So then I'm just going to take the Gaussian Blur and just kind of give it a nice little blur effect. Um, which I think looks looks pretty nice. Just gives it a nice a nice blur. And another thing that I always do is I duplicate the shadow layer. I take the bottom one. I go back to Gaussian blur layer, and then I just give it a nice big blur. It looks dumb now, but what I do is I go back to that layer and then I lower the opacity just to give it a little bit of a overall shadow. Um, just something that I kind of picked up along the way, because for a while I was just using the drop shadow like that, but then there's something to be said about just an overall shadow that the, that the letters are making if they're on a surface. I just think it looks a little bit better. So I'm going to merge those two shadow layers. Okay, so now we have, we have our shadow. We have our little drop shadow. Now the next really cool thing that I always do is I'm going to take this top layer here and I'm going to select. So I'm going to tap the layer and then go to select and then I'm going to make a new layer above that. So the reason I do that is because I don't really, for some reason, I don't really like using like the layer masks or clipping masks. I, I just don't understand how they work. Um, I probably could if I really looked into it, but I just do it this way. So. Um, I take that layer, I take the text layer, select, make a new layer above it, and then go to the new layer. So er, the only thing that's selected is Drug Free Dave. So now what I'm going to do is we'll take a, we'll take an orange, a light orange color, and we'll go with our trusty soft brush, make it a little bit bigger, and then I'm just going to I'm just going to softly color in some of this orange color. <laughs> that looks kind of nice. You know, we'll make we'll make it even we'll make it even uh, even nicer. I'm going to put another text layer underneath it. Actually, no, I'll just do this for now. 
that looks pretty nice. Of course, you can always add another color underneath. So I'm going to select I'm going to select my actual type layer and then I'm going to go to the color layer above that where I put the orange. And then I'm going to go back to soft brush. I'll make it a little bit bigger. And I'll just color in some on this side too cuz why not? So there's endless obviously possibilities of color. You can make it look really nice. Now we did all that on a second on a layer above. So we always have this base layer if we need. We have our color layer. We can go to hue saturation and you can actually you can cycle through if you want to play around with some other colors or see what other possibilities you have. So there's a lot that can be done that can be done there. Okay, so whoops. Tapping the camera tapping the, the camera with my head. Classic. Um, another cool thing that I always do is I like to kind of give the impression of, of light, like there's light hitting it. So uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this color layer and I'm going to alpha lock it. So now only the color that we put on is alpha locked. I'm going to go to this orange color. I'll go back to that orange color. I'm going to make it lighter. And then I'm going to just take the soft brush and I'm just going to brush in some lighter some lighter color just where I think the, the light would be hitting it so if the light is coming from this way then I'm just gonna work that then I'm gonna put some pure white just on this on this D because that would be getting the most light okay so the next thing I do is I'm just going to add a layer below that. So I'm going to add a layer, a layer below this color layer, and I'm going to change that to an add layer. And I'm going to go back to that orange that we used. I'll make it a little bit lighter. And then I'm going to take the soft brush. So we're on our add layer, and we're behind this. So I'm just going to take my soft brush, and I'm just going to I'm just going to brush in some light behind it. Can make it a little bit a little bit bigger. And I'm just brushing in some light where 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 we put those uh, you know where we made the soft white color on the letters. I'm just adding some sort of light as though it's like bouncing off bouncing off of those light areas a little bit behind there okay that looks pretty good um, if you want to change things you can always take your smudge brush and you can always kind of you can always kind of blend it in a little bit more you don't really want to see the marks too much so if you have to blend it just kind of blend away and you can blend on the same brush the soft the soft airbrush Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to take this layer off alpha lock. So I took the color layer off alpha lock and I'm going to go to light pen, which is one of my favorite brushes. So I go to light pen and you know you kind of have to work on keeping your hand steady, but I'm just going to trace along the outline of this and then I sort of I loosen up the pressure as I as I come down to where the shadow would be hitting it so I'm mostly just putting the light on the edge here and I'll do the same thing here the, ed the light might be hitting that that tip pretty hard but then as it goes back towards the shadow then I'll just do really really light really really light touches I'll do the same thing here, but I'll do the, I'll do all of it a little bit lighter because as it get as it gets further away from the light, then it'll be a little lighter. It's a little too dark. If you have to, you can lower the opacity. Sometimes that helps. Right, I think that looks pretty good. We'll put a little little tad on the G. 
that looks pretty good. And of course, you can always go back to your alpha locked uh, light layer. If you want to just take white, you can take your soft brush and then you can sort of just make a bigger, depending on how, how big you want the the kind of light to be the light to be reflecting and kind of bouncing off. So you can oops. You can make it a, a little bit more, a little bit lighter. And if you really want to get crazy, some things that I always do, you might notice in my in my work, I like to have a little bit of atmosphere. So I'll take stubble, the stubble brush, and I'll kind of Kind of go like that. It just sort of gives it a little atmosphere. It gives it it gives it a little texture. Or you can go to light pen again. And if you want to get really crazy, let me make sure I'm on the right layer. If you want to get really crazy, then you can really make sure I'm at 100%. You can really add some light particles. As though the light is, is so bright it's really bouncing off the the dust in the atmosphere. And I kind of like to do this because I, I really like to give my things texture. That's the beauty of Procreate is you can really add a lot of texture. It doesn't have to always be super, super clean. Okay, so that's, so that's adding a little bit of light to it. Give me one second. <laughs> All right, the cat is just like crinkling stuff. Okay. Um, of course, you could always do the same thing down here. If you just want to kind of have fun with it, you can take a similar, uh, you can take this, a similar approach and you can, you can add some brightness. You know, th things like that. So the next thing that you can do, so I'm gonna get rid of this, get rid of this. Uh, another really fun thing you can do is you can actually change the color of the shadow. Uh, I don't use a lot of black, and even though this isn't pure black, it sort of looks like it's black. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna go to my shadow layer, I'm gonna alpha lock it, and then I'm gonna choose a darker blue. So we'll go a little bit darker. Um, I guess I should explain that. So I just, I have it set so if I tap on the screen and hold for a second, I get my color picker. So whichever color I need that's on the screen, um, which I use all the time. So now I go here and I just bring it a little bit lower, and then I'm going to do fill layer. Fill layer only works because this is, the shadow is alpha locked. Okay, so now I'm going to take it off alpha lock. And it's a little bright. It doesn't really look like a shadow anymore. So I'm just going to go to Hue, Saturation, Layer. And then I'm just going to darken it a little bit. I'll up the saturation. And then I'll just darken it a little bit. And of course, you can, if you wanted to change the color, then you can. So there's lots of options. Lots of options there. Where's our original color? There we go. Okay, so if you also wanted to give the words some texture, uh, you can merge these two. So what that, what that will do is that that just merged everything, so now it's just an image. So you won't be able, so make sure that you have your set type the way that you want it, because then you won't be able to like make it smaller and make it bigger without it losing quality. So another thing you can do is, uh, so now we're all on one layer, I'm gonna go to my erase, and I'm going to choose, we'll choose like Sable. And of course you can download my brushes in the description if you want to use the same brushes I'm using. But now that I have Sable, so I'm just going to sort of erase brush down some. And just give it some, some texture. It doesn't have to be really uniform. Uh, if this was like printed on a some sort of industrial machine or something like that, or, you know, uh, some sort of structure or sign that's been outside or weathered. 
it's always a kind of fun, fun look to make things nice and weathered. So you can do that. You can, we'll go back to Sketch Master 1, and you can add some bigger, add some bigger scratches in there. Like it's really, it's really warped. Not warped, but really weathered and And again, you can just use, kind of want to use the same, the same width. You don't want to get too, sometimes even if you're doing um, non-random things, they can sort of, they can sort of become not random enough if you do enough of them. So, so that's just to give it, give it some, uh, give it some texture. Okay, so uh, the last really cool thing that I wanted to show you, we'll go back to our regular, actually we'll just choose a new, a new, a new uh, text. So we'll go with another one that I really like, Cubby Brush, which I like. And let me just make this, okay. Okay, so another really cool thing you can do, so if you want to take this and you want to uh, use an image behind it, and oops, I, I hate when I do that. Okay, so if you want to take this and you want to add an image just inside the letters, uh, this is what you can do. So we're going to make a new layer above, and then we'll go with, we'll go with this color, and then we'll transition to this color. We'll transition to this color. This color. I'm sorry, this is completely slow. I still have like issues like trying to figure out what color I want to use, even though it doesn't really make a big difference, but it's always important to me. And we'll just kinda just kind of make it interesting. Okay, so now we have our colors up here. So what I usually do. And uh, what I usually do, and this isn't, I don't really, I, since I don't really do the clipping masks, all I do is take um, the text layer, I just hit select, and then I go to the color layer. I do the three finger swipe down so I have my options, and I do cut and paste. So now we have, we have just the colors that we just made in the letters. And just to repeat what we did last time, let's say we want to, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to read now. The reason why I always do the drop shadow, so I'm going to alpha lock this, and then I'm gonna, just going to use a dark, a dark color. Alpha lock, fill, and then I'm just going to get my, my little drop shadow. I'm going to take it off alpha lock, I'm going to go to the magic wand, Gaussian Blur layer, and I'm just going to blur that, just like we did before. And of course, you can change the colors if you want. Whoops, am I on the wrong layer? You can change the colors. It's kind of nice. You can add more colors. All you do is alpha lock, and then you can, whatever color you want to add to it. Let's say you want to add a, what's a color we don't have? You want to add a red somewhere. You can just alpha lock and add that red.
and I'll do what I always do just because out of habit I'll Gaussian blur that layer below and then I'll just make it a little less intense and the last thing that we'll do to this uh, just because we're here so I'm going to take shadow 30 and shadow 30 is just the same thing as graffiti brush except it's only 30 percent opacity I'm going to go above this color layer and so I'm just going to put in this 30% opacity. You know how I always do like jelly beans with my like eyes and stuff like that? I'm just doing the same thing here. So I'll do that and then I'll go to um, just regular paintbrush and I'll just add a little just add little pops of light. And it just kind of gives it that it just kind of gives it that uh that feeling as though there's some sort of clear laminate or something on it or sort of I don't know, just fun. Just uh just some fun, some fun stuff. And I always do everything on separate layers because um, it's always good to have the ability to change what you need if you need to change the colors. Or if you, even if you decide that you just want it to be uh, one color completely. You can just uh, alpha lock the layer and then you can just do fill layer. And you can adjust you can adjust as you need you can also use you can go to the vintage brushes and you can use um, you can put some patterns and all this is also with the uh, the soft brush that I always use Looks kind of cool. And we can also, if you want to write, lighten it up, we'll just go back to the soft brush and we have that lighter color. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do that on a layer above. So I'm going to do select. I'm going to add a new layer above. I'm going to change it to add because I love add layers. So now just add add this light in here and then I'll make a layer below it and I'll make that an add layer too whoops make that an add layer I'll go back to the add layer on top and last but not least I'm just gonna put some my trusty old light pen And if you want to make the make it more, the background also really changes the 
the look of what you're doing. So if I make this a little bit darker and use a nice color that really complements it. Whatever color that might be. But that'll just change the look of I like a nice red, looks nice. Put some little light spots. And just add a little bit more. You know what? I'll change it to I'll change it to a yellow, and then I'll, I'll add some. And let's just see how it looks. Sometimes changing the color kind of like gives it an interesting look. Yeah. So, anyway, there's a lot you can do there. Uh, hopefully, this is useful. Um, this is also really great because. Um, it's an easy way to help you change the text for your thumbnails because YouTube thumbnails, um, any thumbnails, any videos you're making, thumbnails are very important. And I don't, I'm not really that good with text. I'm not really a graphic designer, but I do those main things that I showed you, and I have a lot of fun with it. So, um, hopefully, yeah, hopefully you find that useful, and hopefully uh, your text will benefit from the video. So, yeah, keep drawing.